This week, the Ironman 70.3 European Championships in Wiesbaden, Germany. Former European champion Michael Raylet wants to regain the title. We follow age grouper Michel Matin on his first half Ironman. And check out Triathlon Bike Gear. The Ironman 70.3 European Championships is hosted in Wiesbaden in the southwest of Germany. The Hessen state capital is popularly known as the gateway to the Rheingau, one of Germany's best known wine production regions. Wiesbaden, which translates into meadow baths with reference to its hot springs, is also one of the oldest spa towns in Europe. Thousands of spectators gathered to witness the 2,500 athletes, professionals and amateur age groupers alike tackle what is billed as the hardest half day of the year. This day starts with a 1.9 km swim in the Waldsee, after which the athletes ride their way through one of the more challenging 90k 70.3 bike routes and then onto the half marathon in the Hessen capital finishing in front of the famous and majestic Kurhaus. Michael Raylet has already won the Ironman 70.3 European Championships twice. His wins here launching his triathlon career. And Raylet has made it clear that he wants a third title in 2012. Last year I lent the title out as I didn't participate. Tomorrow I want the title back and will do everything I can to get it. Michael started out in short course racing and previously represented Germany at the Olympics. The half Ironman is also known to be a fast format but the distance should never be underestimated. There are many coming from the Olympic distance and they want to impress. They are very fast. They haven't raced at this distance, so one never knows how they'll make the jump to the middle distance. They have tons of speed, but are thin on experience. Michael has enough Kona ranking points and has qualified for Hawaii. There's no need for him to hold back here on his path to Las Vegas and Kona. These next races are the most important for me, starting with the European Championships and then it's the 70.3 World Championships in Las Vegas, where in my opinion I just lent out the title as well. After that, Kona. It'll be my first full distance Ironman World Champs and I feel really good, otherwise I wouldn't have the confidence to say that I can win it. Frenchman Michel Martin will be lining up with the rest of the field in Wiesbaden. He's new to triathlon having started only three and a half months ago after a friend asked him to join in the race. I just, I just said yes. Uh, I subscribed directly and, uh, well, then you have to stick to it and do it. And uh, this is when trouble start. <laughs> the triathlon bug bit Michel. He's addicted. He's already done three triathlons in three months and with every race, challenging himself and racing longer distances. When you start triathlon, you might uh, be scared at first. You want to do a short because you have to, to discover, but very quickly uh, you, you will just love it and you will want to do uh, longer distances. Seeing all the other amateur age groupers who do the half and full distance Ironmans is what inspires and motivates Michel. When you go on the triathlon, you, you think, hey, uh, I'm doing something really big. And then you, you see some some uh, really people, 70 years old, doing Iron Man. Uh, I have a lot of respect for those people. What started as a joke has become a passion. When I started, I just said, I'm doing this Olympic and then I'm done. It's finished, I don't want to hear any more about training, I don't want to hear any more, I want my life back. That's the thing, is that you're gonna love it. You're gonna love crossing the finish line, you're just gonna love the stress before the race, the, the adrenaline of the race. So I'm definitely hooked. It's a strong pro field lined up. However, reigning 70.3 European champion Andy Böcherer had to withdraw last minute due to injury. It's sad for Andy Becker that he can't compete due to injury. I wish him a speedy recovery. Nevertheless, 40 other guys starting and they have it in them to win. Philip Ospoli has come second here before. Czech Philip Ospoli is known for his speed on the run and already beaten Michael's brother Andreas this season at the Ironman 70.3 Austria. Yeah, I want to win. 
but uh, Michael Rielt is too strong. Bike course here is extremely uh, hard and after it we will see uh, what I will, perf will perform and Michael was, will perform on the running course. 70.3 specialist Bart Aronutz, three wins in four races. At the Ironman 70.3 Ruppersville earlier this year, Bart finished second behind Michael Raylett and hopes that this time he'll be in front. If I survive the swim, if I survive the bike, I can still run quite fast and, and run for a win. To be honest, it wouldn't be nice to finish second. That's why I say I want to win the race. Reigning women's European champion Karen Turek isn't racing. Her absence is fueling the expectations of those who will be, like Ironman champ Tina Deckers. I really wanted to do uh, Wiesbaden this year. I think yeah, the race suits me because it's uh, quite hilly. With the stacked women's pro field, it won't be easy for Deckers. Among the contenders are Anja Baranek, Jody Swallow and Julia Geyer. The women's field is really strong. The individual form on the day will dictate the outcome. Race day morning dawns, chilly with a fresh breeze, the rising sun lighting its way up over the trees. I have goose flesh from the anxiety. It makes it easier to get out of bed. Even though it's so early, it isn't too bad. It's fun and really good. Everyone goes through their own nerve-settling routines, ensuring that all is right and ready for race day. This is my 11th Ironman and the fourth time at Wiesbaden. For her, it's her debut. I know the course is challenging, that's why I'm a bit anxious, but I'm looking forward to the challenge and to the finish. Ironman virgin Michel is looking forward to the longest distance race of his short triathlon career. I feel okay. I, feel, I slept pretty well. So I hope not to be too relaxed. <laughs> Others appear more anxious and approach the day with more reserve. Uh, no, no, no good for me. Uh, long distance. Experiment. The Ironman 70.3 European Championships is a premium event also attracting some of the old hands. This is the most important race over the half distance in the German summer season, and I want to have a good showing. Michael Raylett is the outright favorite to win, and this means that the spotlight and all the pressure is on him. I'm excited. It doesn't matter if it's an Ironman, 70.3, or the Olympic distance, or even just a fun run. I just try and stay focused, concentrate. Race day Sunday. The weather seems to be playing its part. Although chilly to start, with a fresh breeze that might add to the challenge on the bike. The water temperature at 23 degrees is wetsuit legal. The athletes amass and wait for the start of their swim. All visualizing the day ahead, thinking through their race plans. Michel Martin is lined up in his wave with the rest of the age groupers for the deep water start. It's a new swim course. A two-loop swim with a brief Australian exit, making up the 1.9 kilometers. And another feature of this swim is the steep exit before running into transition. The 2,500 athletes start in eight separate waves. The first to be set off are the 60-plus professionals of men and women. With several new names in the field, this race will be interesting. Six hundred and fifty meters into the swim, and a lead group is formed. Pulling the leaders is Russian Olympian Ivan Vasilyev, just having raced the Olympic triathlon in London six days previously. With the pink swim cap, German Michael Raylet is in the group, piling on the pressure. He's perfectly positioned in third place. Raylet won here two years ago, and despite some changes to the race course, he knows Wiesbaden well. He wants the championship title again and is taking no chances. Yet, still, Ivan Vasilyev leads. 800 meters later, and first out of the water and through the Australian exit is the Russian in a time of 9 minutes 21 seconds. Raylet is only one second back.
Leading the ladies' race and right up with the leading men is England's Jodie Swallow lying 11th overall. The pace is fast, but for Swallow, originally from a swimming background and former Ironman 70.3 world champion, this is the way she likes it. Trailing by 26 seconds is the German Anja Beranek. With the pros at race pace, the large field of age groupers were set off in waves, some with as many as 400 athletes. For many, this is just another Ironman, but for others, it's their very first step on the journey to an Ironman finish line. Like Michel Martin, he fell in love with triathlon only a few months ago and has since completed three races. 800 meters later, he's through the Australian exit in a time of 17 minutes and 41 seconds. Back with the leaders, and it's Russian Olympian Ivan Vasilyev controlling the swim, and he smashes the swim in a very fast 21 minutes and 51 seconds. Mikhail Rail is his third. It's still early in the race. You can't win a triathlon in the swim, but you can lose it. Swim done, it's out the water and off to transition. The lead pack is close together. However, Mikhail Rayleigh takes control and takes the lead. He's phenomenally fast in transition. Early leader on the swim, Ivan Vasiliev is down to fifth out of T1. He's already lost 13 seconds to the new leader, Mikhail Raylet. <music> Ladies leader, Jody Swallow, exits the swim after 1.9K, only 10 seconds behind the male leader. She will want to further capitalize on this advantage. Lying second, 1 minute 32 seconds back, is Anya Beranek, patiently chasing the lead. The 90-kilometer bike course from the Walze in Raunheim to Itstein and then to Wiesbaden is a tough one, with 1,500 meters of climbing. Michel Martin exits the swim, the first of three disciplines on his first foray over the 70.3 distance. I'm really happy. So, so far, so good. First time, Michel uses his time in transition to apply sun cream as he anticipates a hot day in the saddle. By now, German Michael Raylet has a slim lead of three seconds. At a speed of 40.68 kilometers an hour, Raylet is flying, but he can see the chase pack not far behind him. The ladies' race is providing serious championship excitement. A few weeks previously, German Anja Beranek finished an exceptional second at the Ironman Frankfurt, the European champs over the full distance. After the swim, she had a deficit of 1 minute 31 seconds on Swallow, and it almost looked like another second place for her. But Baronek is having the race of her life and has taken the lead. The men's race is a close affair. Francis Stefan Poulain is only three seconds behind, with Ivan Vasiliev in third, six seconds off the lead. The men's lead yo-yos, Raylet versus Stefan Poulain, with Ivan Vasiliev in the mix, keeping things interesting. Two-thirds into the bike course, former European and world champion over the 70.3 distance, Michael Raylet asserts himself. And then, a new player enters the fray, in the form of Belgium's Bart Aronuts. Novice age grouper Michel Matin is on the bike. He says it's not his favorite discipline, but he keeps going, doing his best. He knows it's not all about the bike. I won't push too hard the cycling to make sure I do a good running, so... <laughs> I want this to be finished. With Michel Martin being conservative on the bike to ensure a finish on the run. Leading the professional men's field is Michel Raylet into the second and final transition off the bike after two hours, 52 minutes and four seconds of racing. His lead over Bard Ernutz and Turni Degen is a mere three seconds. Three hours, eight minutes and 54 seconds after the start of the race, women's leader Anja Baranek enters the transition. Spain's Virginia Berzategui has moved into second and trails the German by two minutes and 37 seconds. After not being able to race for four years due to illness, Anya returned strong and turned pro in 2011. 
Will Bart Ernutz have the legs to catch Michael Raylet? Can Baronek hold off Beresatogui and Swallow? And will French amateur Michel finish his first half Ironman? We find out after the break. We're back at the Ironman 70.3 European Championships in Wiesbaden. 2,500 athletes are challenging themselves here. This beautiful but hilly landscape is testing their limits and tapping their reserves. First goal, to finish. That's what they came here for. That's what they fight for. It's a four-loop half marathon through the historic Kur Park. 21.1 kilometers of running, it's the last of three disciplines. With every step, the athletes get closer to that magical finish. After a little more than three kilometers into the run, Mikhail Weylet has a 25 second lead. Lying second, 16 seconds back, is the Belgian Bart Herenuz. Russian Olympian Ivan Vasiliev is in third, 48 seconds behind the lead. Four hours, three minutes and 54 seconds of racing later, Michel Matin leaves the bike course and enters transition. It's time for the ultimate test. It's time for the run. As things stand, it could be a perfect day for Germany with a double German victory. Michel Raylet is still leading and female leader Anja Bernek looks in control of the ladies race with a three minute cushion. Strong in second is Virginia Beresatogui. Virginia is a two-time winner at Wiesbaden and is racing on tired legs after having done long-distance champs two weeks previously. With the European summer sun hot and high in the sky, the athletes need to stay hydrated and consume over 12,000 litres of liquids, including water and isotonic sports drinks. It's the final loop of the run for the men's leader, Michael Raylet, only meters away from the finish line, from being crowned Ironman 70.3 champion, European champion. Germany's Michael Raylet breaks the tape in a blistering time of 4 hours, 3 minutes and 58 seconds, showing the world his Ironman form and Ironman intentions for 2012. I'm really pleased. I got this title for one year. It's my second European champion title now. I'm proud and I hope I can add two world champion titles in the future. Bart Aronutz claims second in front of Germany's Boris Stein who's third. Only two minutes, 30 seconds behind Michael Raylet. It was too strong, so I just gave it all for the, for the second place. Michael Raylet's run took him to victory. A brilliant bike split gave Bart second while Vasiliev's swim kept him in the mix. Germany's Anja Baranek shows her second in Frankfurt was no fluke, with a superb win in 4 hours, 36 minutes and 9 seconds. I have to realize, uh, firstly, that I've got the European champion title. It's amazing. I couldn't believe it till the last meters. It's really a successful season for me. I've trained really hard for my first professional season. Slowly, I'm getting good results from my hard work. I have a motto, you will never have everything, but you will always get everything back. I think today, I got everything back. A gritty race from Spain's Virginia Beresategui sees her grab second, Four minutes, 20 seconds later. I was here twice, 2007 and 2008, and I won here. And you know, this is one of my favorite races. The last lap was really, really tough, but I give all until the finish line and at the end second. Oh, for me, it's more than what I expected. Closing in fast, but running out of road, Julia Geyer takes third place.
A power bike and outstanding run lifts Baronek to the top step of the podium. Jody Swallow produced a spectacular swim, but just missed a podium position in the final results. Wiesbaden's Kurhaus provided the perfect backdrop for the victors to celebrate their victory in front of thousands of spectators. Now is the last round, so I like to make it under six hours, so it's gonna be uh, playing with the second, so I better hurry up. It's been almost six hours of racing and Michel Martin is closing in on his first Ironman 70.3 finish line. Uh, I finished uh, less than six hours, so I'm happy with that. The blue carpet of the finish line, thronged by thousands of spectators, ensures every finisher can celebrate their efforts on the day, turning pain into pleasure. The hardest half day of the year is celebrated with the age grouper and pro award ceremony hosted inside the historic Kurhaus where all the podium winners receive their trophies. Everybody is a winner, but none more so than the oldest age group division winner, Winfried Schmidt, and of course, the European champion, Michael Raylet. American Jordan Rapp stole the show at the first ever Ironman US Championships in New York City. Rapp completed the course in 8 hours, 11 minutes, 18 seconds, over 13 minutes ahead of second place finisher Maxim Kriat of Ukraine. Josef Majo took third. Mary Beth Ellis took on the Ironman US Championships in 9 hours, 2 minutes, 48 seconds. Ellis beat second place Rebecca Keat by 11 minutes, Amy Marsh in third. It started with a crystal clear ocean swimmer Miss Tropical Fish followed by a windy bike with Tour de France crowds and ended with perhaps the most torturous run you will ever experience. This was the Ironman 70.3 Philippines. Pete Jacobs crossed the finish line in four hours, seven minutes. The completion of a tough run was evident on the Aussie's face. A little under two minutes behind was Jacobs. Brown crossed third. In the ladies race, Caroline Steffen won by seven minutes ahead of Brie Wee from the United States who had stronger legs and torturous conditions than Australian Belinda Granger coming in third. It was a record-breaking day at the Ironman 70.3 in Calgary. Leading the charge was Denmark's Rasmus Henning, who set a new mark of 3 hours 51.02 and a new course record. It was a close finish with Australian Chris Lech in second and Jeffrey Simmons in third. The fastest woman of the day was Magali Tisserie from Quebec. Tisserie led the woman with a total time of 4 hours 17.24, leaving Heather Jackson in second and fellow Canadian Melanie McQuaid in third. Triathlon is very gear-centric and equipment plays an important role in all three disciplines of triathlon. When I was if I was an amateur with ambitions, I would focus on the equipment. You have to gear up for the three sports. In this show, we take a look at the most time-consuming, yet fastest discipline, the bike. There's no swimsuit or running shoe that will make you go as fast as your bike will. I think the bike on itself, it's, it's really important that you have an aerodynamic bike, uh, the wheels you put in, the bike itself, so I think you can, you can make a lot of profit there. Aluminium or carbon, aero helmet or regular, but more important than which material or which equipment is drag and your comfort on the bike. You have to run afterwards. That means you have to find a balance between aerodynamics and comfort. To find this balance, there are specialists like Stefano. Professional athlete or keen age grouper, you need to optimize your bike and position to fit your ability and physiology. That's why the feedback of the rider is most important. He decides what the most aerodynamic position he can hold comfortably, so he can run afterwards. Bottles and nutrition on the bike also affect the aerodynamics, but are crucial on the half and full Ironman distance. 
you have to find the compromise between having them accessible and the optimum aerodynamics. For a half Ironman, I use two drinking bottles. If I race an Ironman, I take more nutrition with me, so then I use a bottle in the back as well. For pros, it's a science of seconds between win and lose. For amateurs, an expensive hobby. Customizing the bike is the key to a comfortable ride, to maintain your strength and flexibility over all three disciplines. Next week, highlights of the Ironman Sweden in Kalmar with last year's European champion Andy Bechera. And we follow an amateur on his last full distance before participating in Kona.